I'm going to cheat and start talking before he gets my slides up so they can't start turning. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Jeff Perlman. Um, I started Bright Power in 2004 to deliver smart, sustainable energy solutions to New York City and beyond. Um, we've done work nationally and internationally. Um, and I'm going to talk about the New York City Smart Grid, which is something that we have some involvement in, but I'm also going to tell you about what Con Ed is doing and others as well. So, um, what do we have now? We have a pretty dumb grid. We have power plants, we have meters in buildings, and the way power gets from one place to another is through power lines, and it goes in one direction, and one direction only. And we have meter readers who have to go around outside and uh, actually physically read meters in order to determine how much energy you've used. It happens once a month, and that's about all you've got. The meter reader goes out, he goes back to his office, he uploads the data, and you get these utility bills. What do they mean? Who knows? They've got a bunch of uh, you know, numbers all over them, and most people don't really pay much, pay much attention at all. One of the things that we do in my company, um, before we get and get to the smart board, is try to interpret and analyze these bills. And so um, there's a lot of information in them. We put together this thing called energy scorecards, which we think is pretty cool. And we take the utility bills, we try to turn them into something useful so you don't have to worry about all that mumbo jumbo on the bills, grade the buildings based on similar buildings, break out energy usage and heating, cooling, all that kind of stuff. And there are some other companies out there who are doing things like this to make the dumb grid a little bit smarter. Um, one of the other things we can do, we have a whole bunch of buildings. I know many of you probably don't own lots of buildings, but if you did, um, we could work with you to plot all your buildings on a chart and show you which ones are the inefficient buildings. We can do that even with the dumb grid. Um, we can also quantify the savings when you make energy efficiency retrofit improvements. So here's an example. This is uh, before a lighting retrofit happened to the building, and this is after. And so the blue line is the model of what the uh, building would have been using um, in the past, and the green line is what it actually is using in the future. You can see visually the savings, and we can do that, again, with the dumb grid, just with the bills that, that, that come in. However, um, the dumb grid doesn't give us the ability to really uh, control the energy usage within, the, uh, within our buildings, and so we end up with blackouts. Um, and uh, blackouts tend to happen on the days of the year when we're using the most energy. And this graph actually is a nice segue from the last presentation because the blue line is showing what happens back in 2001 um, where the, once the blue line exceeds the red bar going across, that means we get a blackout because we've exceeded the amount of power that the grid can handle. The yellow line is if we had lots of solar power, um, like sort of as much as we could in the city, how, how we could have pulled that blue line down and then we wouldn't have had the same kinds of problems uh, that, that we had back at that blackout and other blackouts that have been similar. So solar, solar can be an answer. And truthfully, before we even get to the smart grid, we can get to some two-way communication. This is what happens when we, we have solar um, on the grid. We have what's called net metering. And so this uh, meter, oh, wrong button. Um, this uh, meter over here, now instead of going just one way from the power company into the building, can also go back into the, into the utility grid. And so the solar panels generate power, it travels through the building, it feeds, serves the building, if uh, the building can use the energy, and if not, um, it can actually go back out to the grid and you get credit for that. Now, that's still a dumb grid scenario, but we still don't have control. And so that's, that, that's really what, what uh, the smart grid is all about, is being able to understand and control energy usage. And so here's a smart grid. And in a smart grid, communication goes both ways. So power goes both ways and communication goes both ways. Here's a power plant, here's a transmission substation, distribution substation, this is uh, the local grid, and then it gets to, to, the, to the end user. But um, power can go back the other way as well. And communication, also goes both ways. So here's transmission, here's distribution, here's maybe a third party, here's some distributed energy that can go back and talk to the end users, it can also go back into the grid. And so really that's what, when we talk about smart grid, we talk about this, these networks of communication. And so this is from Con Ed, this is their image of what a smart grid in New York looks like. And a smart grid in New York means that everything's interconnected and things can go both ways and things talk to each other. These little, these little bleepers, and this, this, is, this is different parts of the grid talking to each other, which right now doesn't happen at all. 
Um, and so you have solar panels on a building, you have meters on that building that are, that are talking to this master system, you have these transmission uh, monitoring, that's, that's talking to the system, you can have electric cars that charge into the grid but also can pull out of the grid depending on uh, what the demands are on the system. Um, and uh, we can have uh, other kinds of generators that are placed on the system. So we have all these, this, this bi bi-directional communication and thereby we have control. And so uh, Con Ed is doing this pilot program. We're not involved in it, but uh, Mary wanted me to talk a little bit about it. It's going to be in Long Island City. Um, and uh, basically they're installing some intelligent grid systems to reduce the um, risk of large network outages. They're putting wireless control in, remote controlled switches on overhead and underground stations. They're upgrading transformers and implementing real-time monitoring. What does it mean for consumers? The most uh, um, famous part of smart grid technology are smart meters. And so 1,500 of them are going in in Queens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm halfway done, man. Um, so, uh, so this is a, a nice picture of a, of a smart meter. We've got, uh, you know, we've got solar panels, we've got wind, he's got a, a light bulb. Um, well, if you really want me to stop, I will. But, uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, one more slide. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, so, so, so there are these, um, uh, uh, well, whatever. So, <laughs> it, doesn't go, it doesn't go quite that far. Um, some of the other pictures are just things, you know, other ways in which you can visualize energy usage um, using, using the smart grid. Um, it, it gives you a window onto your usage. And then the one other thing I wanted to mention, besides the, the smart meters, is that we can move to the next level, which I would call a smart home. And that's when you um, have a device that's within your home, and you can actually monitor the usage of the, uh, you know, the different appliances in your home, and they're actually talking to each other. So much the same way you have a grid, and have the grid talking to itself, and enabling it to control itself. You can also have a smart home where the devices in the home are uh, able to talk and be controlled, and you can control your energy usage. There it is.